Fascinating. So the outline mesh post-process material has been used here just to help with a bit of user feedback in terms of the interface design for this box demo, which is the um, workshop widget playlist um, on this channel. So you can sort of have a look at how that all works, but we'll look at how the outline um, post-process material is set up. Um, it's available below to download as well. So once you've downloaded the post-process material uh, for outlining mesh, you will note that there is an error. The material functions seem to have kind of refreshed and they're all in there. We just need to reconnect them. So I'm just going to kind of run through how to do that. So if you come into our uh, master material, you'll see that all these functions have been unspecified. They're all there when I say, <laughs> but I don't know quite what happens when you bring them in. Um, and you may also need to reconnect uh, the outline color, which is part of the material parameter collection, should you want to gain access from that and change the color in your blueprints. So how do we go about reconnecting all this? So if we go back to our folder, there are three material functions. So if we drag those into our material, it'll say that it, it might, might say it can't drop them in, but it can. So the first one is um, texture neighbor. So that comes here. We duplicate that and here. So that we get rid of the unspecified ones. Um, the next are this sort of grid of nine. So we just need to replicate that. And there's a reason for laying them out in that way. It will make sense in a moment. So let me just replicate that. And again, same for here. And then the output. So the same for horizontal and vertical. And basically this is the Sobel method, which looks at a pixel on screen and then looks at the eight pixels that surround that one and then work out if there's any kind of edge detection and then makes use of that. So I'll demonstrate on this first one what needs to happen and then we're just going to repeat it for both. So for this one, we plug into the mask, it will throw up an error. So when you get around to doing the bottom one, same thing into there, okay? So we have here in our convolved texture, row one, two, three. So we have to plug in row one, two, wrong, plug in again, row three. We need to put the inside into the, inverse size into the texel. And then you'll see we've got middle center, middle left, bottom left. So middle center, middle left, bottom left, top center, top left, bottom center, top right, middle right, and bottom right. Okay, and then the equivalent on the output, middle left, top left, top center, top right, middle center, middle right, bottom left, bottom center, and bottom right. Okay. So we now need to repeat exactly that on here. So I'll just pause and do that. Also make sure that you've dragged the post-process outline actor into the world. And if we pop into the actor itself, look at the post-process component, looking down at post-process material and make sure that we have the PP outline instance material selected. One last thing that we need to do is make sure that our instance material 
has that reconnected master material um, as its parent. So let's just do that. And then you'll note this cube, which I've just dragged in. The one thing that you need to make sure on the static mesh is that you have the render custom depth past enabled. So let me just let this, you can see when I turn that on and off, the outline is appearing. So it might be quite subtle. Now, one thing looking back into the material and looking at the functions, I was sort of playing around with some of the values. Now, so when we click on the sample scene texture neighbor UVs and we come in here, now we're just offsetting by a pixel. So actually, if you come in and change these values, so to minus two or minus three, and then just go through methodically, so zero, minus three, three, minus three, um, then it will increase the weight of the outline. So you've got a little bit of control over that. So to demonstrate that, I've just changed all the values to minus or positive three. And now if we come back to our map, we can see that that line is now much fatter. So it gives us a bit more control. Um, looking into our material parameter collection, obviously we've got other values that we can play with. So we can change the color. And again, this can be done at runtime. So you might have a different color depending on a particular state or value of an object. Um, so, you know, you've got control over that too. The other node that gives you some control over the effects impact is here. So this value of 15,000 is basically a fall off value. So you can change that and the effect can trigger at a greater distance. But by default in here, it's set to um, 15,000. So, you know, potentially you could set that up as a material scalar parameter value and then kind of be able to edit it there, which might be a bit easier than kind of coming deeply rooted into this material. So that's a little bit more control. So if it's still not showing up, just double check one thing and pop into your project settings and do a search for custom depth stencil pass and make sure that that is enabled. A quick demonstration of how that's all come together. Now I am using the hover state of this button to enable and disable the uh, custom render um, depth on the mesh. So that's turning on and off that effect. And now actually when I'm clicking the button, you'll see that I've got a few things going on. So when I click this button, I am setting the outline material parameter collection and it's updating the outline on our mesh. But I'm also getting that value and affecting the color of the button and the text inside a widget. So this is just to demonstrate this notion of using the material parameter collection as a global variable. Live long and prosper.